Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Mini Cooper S hardtop with the center exhaust, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure that this is gonna work for you. So when it comes to the Mini Cooper, you know, they're fun cars and people like to get them out on nice days and things like that. And whenever it's nice out, you wanna get out and do stuff, right? Um, and it seems like a lot of people uh, like to use their hitch for bike racks, which makes sense. Um, get that nice day, you wanna go riding, but you wanna take your, your mini out as well. Having a trailer hitch back here is gonna allow you to do that and use your uh, accessory or use your hitch to plug in accessories. Something that I do wanna address right away, it seems like there's a lot of confusion about fitment. And you know, there's a lot of different types of these minis, uh, all a little bit different from the next. And that's going to kind of justify what trailer hitch is, is gonna work for your mini. Um, I know in the past, we've had some here at E-Trailer that have single exhaust. And I think there's a couple of different options for those available. Um, but I believe we've yet to come across one uh, with the center exhaust like ours has here today. And this hitch actually worked out really well uh, for this one. It sits up above your exhaust pipes. I mean, there's just really nowhere else for it to go. Um, with that said though, we have a hard top uh, S four door with the center exhaust obviously, and we didn't run into any issues as far as fitment or anything like that goes. Um, I would imagine if he had a two door, it would, it would be set up the same. I highly doubt there's any changes really uh, back here. But, you know, with that in mind, it's hard to speak to every single one. It seems like they're all just a little bit different, but there are several hitches available uh, for different uh, sub models and things like that. So uh, definitely just be sure to use our fit guide and uh, the drop down menu that allows you to select what model you have. That way you can make sure you get a hitch that's going to properly fit your mini. So this is just gonna have the inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening, uh, which is a common size for compact cars like this. Um, at the end, there will be a reinforced collar for a little bit of extra support. And I actually kind of like it too, uh, as opposed to, you know, there's hitches out there, maybe not available for this car, but that don't have a collar on it. And it just kind of looks cheap to me, but uh, that's not the case with this one. I actually like it. It is going to have the half inch size pen hole. Pen and clip don't come included. If you need one though, you can grab it here at E-Trailer. And it's tight, but it is manageable to get it in there for sure. The safety chain openings. So there are safety chain openings. They're really, really hard to get to. They're kind of buried up there. Um, probably not a big deal for a lot of people. You're probably not gonna be using them, but if you had to, or if you planned on using them a lot or something, you know, you can get it up there like this, but if I was gonna use it occasionally and stuff, I would probably just cut out a little bit more of this fascia just to make it a little more manageable to get our hook up there. One thing I am actually happy to see is the fact that the end of the hitch just co does come out uh, pretty much flush with our bumper, maybe even just a hair past it. And I feel like that's a good thing since primarily uh, a lot of people are going to be using bike racks with this. That's going to give you that clearance you need to be able to take that bike rack, fold it in that upright position and not have uh, to worry about it hitting the back of your mini. As far as hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to have a 300 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating and that's going to be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So uh, you could be able to use as one to three, maybe even four bike racks. Uh, just to kind of give you an example. And as far as the hitch's maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's gonna be 2,000 pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight pulling on the hitch. So the weight of your trailer, plus anything you might have on it. Uh, I do always like to suggest, so it's never a bad idea just to grab your vehicle's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Mini can pull that much weight safely. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out what hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's gonna be about 15 and one quarter of an inch, which is actually pretty nice. It's relatively high off the ground. So you could probably use a hitch mount accessory that has a straight shank. 
from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, that's gonna be about one inch. And you can use that measurement to figure out exactly if any of those flowing accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. But other than that, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I feel like this hitch is probably uh, about as good as it can get, given the space you have to work with and everything else. Uh, you know, it has some, some good functionality and, and in my opinion, can't really look much better, like I said, given what you have to work with. One thing I do want to mention though, since it does sit right above our exhaust, if you happen to have an accessory in here, you're going to put one in and your car's hot, you've been driving it, be careful that, you know, your tailpipes might be a little warm, you know, be on the safe side, let it cool down for a minute. That way when you're in here, you don't burn your hands or anything. Uh, but that's just kind of the nature of it there, you know, something that you're just gonna have to live with. Um, you know, as far as the installation goes though, for a Mini, it was probably one of the easier ones that we've done. Really wasn't all that bad. You do have to take the fascia off, but thankfully, uh, uh, the majority of the fasteners are easy to get to and everything else and once that's out of the way the hitch actually fit up there pretty good so you know as long as you take your time really shouldn't give you too many issues but uh, speaking of the installation why don't we go ahead and put the hitch on together now to begin our installation we're going to be here uh, at the back of our mini and we are going to have to remove our rear bumper cover that way we can get the hitch on so to start um, on each side at the bottom, we're gonna have four eight millimeter head screws. We'll pull those out. This one in the corner, I don't think we need to worry about. I think it's just holding on or helping to hold on this piece. So not gonna worry about it. If you have to come back and take it off, not really a big deal. But for now, we'll get these four. And I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also gonna do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Now, if we look in our wheel well uh, towards the back of the vehicle, uh, midway through, I guess you could say, there's an indention with another eight millimeter head screw and we need to pull that out. Not a lot of room to work, but thankfully, I'm just gonna grab this socket. These aren't very tight and uh, pull this out by hand. What we need to do now is pop off this uh, trim piece here and I'm going to try to get it probably about halfway up that way we don't have to take the whole thing off and as long as we kind of clear this body line we should be in good shape because um, there is a fastener in here I believe we'll have to take out so the way to get this off you know I put some tape around here so we don't scratch anything but we should be able to do this by hand and we're just going to kind of pry up on it and that'll release these clips. And I think this will be good right about here. But with that said, on the back side, we're gonna have a, a, a wire that we need to disconnect from our light and get this uh, fastener out up here in this area. So here's the light connector. You can push down on the center of it and pull it out. So there's kind of a better, better shot there. That's the tab you push down and when you're pushing down, pull back. And if we look up, there's a fastener. And that is a Torx bit fastener. I believe it's a P25. And again, not a ton of room here. And I'd rather not take this whole piece off if you don't have to, because, you know, with these plastic clips and stuff, if you mess with them too much, sometimes they break and then it kind of just turns into a headache, so. That's kind of my reasoning behind it there, but let's go ahead and get this uh, screw pulled out. At this point, we need to get our tail lights out. And so first thing you're gonna do is remove this chrome bezel and it's just snapped into place. It'll be kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but once we get it off, I'll turn it around and show you. But sometimes you can do this by hand. These kind of make me nervous just because they're plastic, but what I found in the past using a trim tool, plastic trim tool like this, you can kind of work your way around it and 
kind of just start to start to kind of pop everything off. You know, if it if it's struggling one way, if you try to go this way and it's super tight, try to go the other way, you know, and and just work your way around it. Get everything loosened up. In case you're wondering, the chrome part is separate from this black piece, so you don't have to try to get that up or anything. But I'm just gonna kinda work our way around. And once it's popped off, these little indentions there that go all the way around, those snap onto uh, these guys. So that's what's holding that ring in place. So that's what I was doing. I was trying to pry under there and kind of get, get it like that and, and pop it off. With that out of the way, we can get the fasteners out. So we're gonna have three, one up top, two in the bottom corners there. Uh, they're Torx bit fasteners. I have a T20. And I'll just get these removed. Need to unplug the light now. So you're gonna have these panels on the side. You can just pop them out of the way. And there's a connector back here. It might be kind of tricky to see, but we're gonna unplug that <clears throat> essentially the same way that we unplug the lights on the side. Just reach in and push down on that center tab and, and pull it out. And then the only thing keeping the tail light in is there's some plastic tabs inside here down at the bottom so on the bottom on each side and you can kind of grab the tab and and pull it out one way so you're not going to be able to see this but once i get the light out you'll see what i'm talking about you'll kind of push in on the tab if i can manage to get my hand back here so once you're you know you're pushing in on them tabs and kind of trying to pull the light out so i got them released that right there is a tab. You'll have the same one on the other side, but so when I was reaching down there, I was pushing it in like that, and that would uh, allow it to release. So tail light out, we'll go ahead and set it off to the side. With the light gone, that exposes a fastener here that's uh, helping hold the bumper cover on, and another Torx bit, so we'll go ahead and get it removed. So it turns out uh, we are gonna have to remove that additional fastener we talked about earlier. At first glance when I looked at it, it looked like it wasn't going on anything because I realized it was disconnected from our wheel well liner, but the other side was connected. Uh, so something, some issue here, but uh, regardless, we'll put it back together the right way once we get everything in place. So we are going to need to remove this one, as well as the one on the other side of our car. And here is the issue. This uh, clip was no longer connected to our wheel well liner. So this should go uh, look something like this. And that way, when we put it back together, it'll keep everything attached the way it should. Now at the next set of hands, we can get our fascia off. So you can kind of start at the corner. And if it don't pop right off, probably easier to kind of get underneath here with a trim tool. And once the other side is like that, we can kind of start to carefully undo everything. And be careful, you might have some wiring you need to disconnect. In our case, it looks like we do have several of them, actually. Sometimes there's this one big harness you can unplug, but looks like it might be easier to do it this way. So just like all the other stuff we unplugged, We'll just kind of go through and, and get everything unclipped. So once everything's unplugged, we'll go ahead and take our fascia and set it off to the side. At this point, with the fascia out of the way, we can get our bumper beam removed. So we're gonna have two, or two nuts rather holding it on each side, one up top, one at bottom. So I'm gonna take an 18 millimeter socket. Just gonna break these loose. Thankfully, they're not super tight, so relatively manageable. And then I'll take my power tool, speed things up, and get these uh, all the way off. Now 
Once I get the other side off, we'll be, we should be able to remove our bumper beam. And slide it off and get it out of the way for now. So at this point, um, the instructions tell us to pull all this wiring off and this whole plastic deal, they want you to take all the hardware out from it. Um, what I did though, I just found that kind of odd. What I did was just kind of held our hitch up into position and it looks like it's gonna clear all this. So we really shouldn't have to worry about it. Um, the only, I, I know for a fact though, this is in the way. So we are gonna have to trim a piece of this and the heat shield, but my thought is do that first and then we can see if the hitch will fit. If it does, great. If not, you know, we need to come back and maybe trim a piece of this or move something around, then, then so be it. But um, for now, uh, this is what we're gonna do. So it'll be easier to cut this plastic piece if we take it off. Uh, two, two nuts. It's a 10 millimeter socket I'm using. It should pop off, it looks like, so try to pull this off and down. We'll slide it out. So this piece, I think we're able just to kind of cut off this whole portion here. Uh, pretty thin plastic. I'm just going to use a Dremel tool. Could probably use a pair of snips or something too. Uh, might just take you a little bit longer, but go ahead and get this material removed. Before we put that plastic piece up there that we just cut, I think it'd be easier to trim our heat shield. And the reason for this is so our hitch will clear. So diagram the instructions, marked it out. And I'm gonna use a pair of 10 snips. I might have to get my Dremel tool to get these, this piece back here. Uh, we'll see, but for now we'll just try our snips. Whenever you're doing this, you know, be really conscious. Uh, might, you know, not hurt to put a pair of gloves on, at least give you a layer of protection. This stuff can get pretty sharp sometimes. So as long as you're careful, you know, you should be all right. What I'm trying to do is just kind of trying to weaken it here and I, I might just be able to snap this off actually. Yep, so that worked out really well and uh, that should do the trick. Once the heat shield's trimmed, I went ahead and put this piece that we cut earlier back into place, you know, opposite way that we removed it. And um, after kind of holding the hitch up, it'll, it'll work. This area here, you kind of get hung up on. You could probably kind of jam it and make it work, but I feel like it'd just be easier if you just kind of cut out a little bit of material right here, give us a little extra space. Uh, to get the hitch up. Probably not a bad idea to kind of reach back there, make sure there's no wiring or anything. And kind of a tight area to cut. So I'm just gonna use a Dremel tool to get it removed. So now we should be able to grab our hitch, slide it, over the bumper studs and into position and check everything. Everything looks like it clears and, and fits pretty good actually. So should be in good shape. Once we verify that, we're gonna take the factory nuts, we'll get them started hand tight and then we can come back with our socket and snug them down. Might not be a bad idea too if you can, you know, adjust it from side to side. Just center it, you know, as best as you can there. So that looks like it's about as good as good as it's gonna get. So we'll tighten it down.
At this point, we need to make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer. A lot of times, go to your local auto parts store. They'll have one there available that you can rent. So what I've done is taken our fascia and just loosely put it back in place. Um, I did put some painters tape here along this and I'm doing this so we can figure out where we need to trim. There's a diagram and the instructions, but if you can kind of do it this way, it always seems to give you a little more accurate results. But honestly, it doesn't really look like we need to trim much because as soon as I push this a little bit harder and it falls over this lip, it should be pretty close, but to be on the safe side and allow you to have some access to the pen and clip, um, what I think I might do is just take out some material here and, um, you know, just a little square, never going to really see it. And hopefully that'll make it fit a little bit better. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll put it on, see how it looks. If you need to come back and take more out, not a big deal. Uh, that's what we'll do. But for now, we'll pull this uh, fascia back off and, and cut that out. So I kind of marked out completely where we need to cut. Um, not a lot of room behind here, so be aware of that. Uh, so I'm just going to carefully use a Dremel tool to cut that material out. So after looking at this, feeling pretty good about everything fitting. So plugged all of our electrical back in and we're going to uh, get the fascia back on. So this will just install the opposite way that we removed it essentially. Looks like everything's clearing, so I think we might be in pretty good shape here. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver for your 2017 Mini Cooper S hardtop.